Welcome to the second in my series of tutorials, Photo Editing for Beginners. In this one we're going to talk about colour and how to get the colours you want in your pictures. First of all, let me say that there's no such thing as absolute colour. There's no such thing as the colours you saw or the correct colours because those colours are varying all the time depending on what kind of light you view it under and uh, how your eyes are feeling that day, to be honest. Uh, here's a picture of a field taken on a cloudy day around about midday. And if I show you the same field a few moments later when the sun came out, you'll see that the grass is very much more yellow, as you would expect. You could kind of That's obvious to you. But it means that when you're actually balancing up the colour in a picture, you can't really say, this is correct or this is not correct. So we just go for the colours that please us at the time. Now first of all I have to show you something about the theory of the colour and how it works in your photo editing software and how it works in your camera. Now the camera uh, is not taking the same static picture all the time uh, or the static colours in the same way as your eyes are changing all the time according to the uh, light uh, so the camera is that's why it's called automatic white balance it's not a fixed thing but the camera is trying to give you the colors that you th saw with your eyes but it is not always entirely successful in doing that okay so let's talk about how color is measured in uh, a photograph we'll just change to something with a few more vivid colors um, first of all the color mode that we use uh, is RGB and that stands for red green and blue there are other color modes but we're not going to talk about those today CMYK lab color etc etc uh, loads of different ones that aren't even on here but RGB is the one that we need to know about and the one that you will use 99.99% of the time. Okay, so each pixel in your picture has a value of red, a value of green, and a value of blue. And if you look over here and this little palette over here that I'm pointing to, uh, you'll see the numbers come up as I scroll across the picture. Unfortunately, as soon as I come out of the picture, the numbers disappear. But if I move over to the picture now, you'll see that I'm pointing to this grey skirt. And the values are 43 red, 45 green, 42 blue. So more or less a neutral colour. If I point to something white or whitish, uh, well that's absolute pure white. That's 255, 255, 255 which means that there is no detail in that little area there. Uh, the scale incidentally goes from 0, which is black, up to 255 uh, for each color. And if you multiply those three colors uh, by each other, 255 times 255 times 255, you come to the 16 million colors that are available in this particular uh, setup. You know. Um, this is 8-bit depth, but we won't go into all that. Anyway, all you need to know, 0 is black, 255 is white. Now, if I move to the uh, red skirt here, you can see now that you've got 108 red and very little green, very little blue. So it shows us that we have a, a fairly pure red there. Now, if to further illustrate the point, I've got the channels palette open here. Um, now, when I press on the red here, you see the picture goes black and white. And all we're seeing now is the red values. So they call this the red channel. Uh, so these are the red values in the picture. So there is no red there or very little red there and quite a lot of red there. Now watch that red skirt as I go to the green channel and the blue channel and you can see yeah, very little detail in there. The blouse here contains quite a bit of green but not much blue and lots and lots of red. Okay, so going back to the color. So that illustrates the point. Three colors, three sets of numbers 
which you can now instantly forget. <laughs> right, okay. Now over here, the next thing I want to show you is the color wheel, uh, which sort of shows you the relationship between the colors. Now I made this by just putting a blob of red, a blob of blue, and a blob of green into a circle. And the interesting thing is you can see in the middle where the red and green and blue have equal values, you get an area of gray. If you look at the numbers up in the chart again, you can see that if I sort of move it around a little bit, it's not absolutely 100% perfect because I've got to find that one pixel probably that is absolutely gray. But you can see the point, you know. Now, these other colors which are quite interesting, where the two colors overlap. You've got over here a purpley color, which is actually called magenta. You've got a bluey green color here, which is called cyan. And up here, quite difficult to see, but that there is a yellow color in between the green and the orange. These are called subtractive primaries, okay? Magenta, cyan, and oh sorry magenta cyan and yellow and the rgb red green blue are called the primary colors now the subtractive primaries are called subtractive primaries because if you take red away from neutral or gray you end up with cyan if you take green away from gray you end up with magenta and if you take blue away from gray, you end up with yellow. So those are the subtractive primaries. And as you can see also, the opposite. Um, so if you have too much blue in your picture, you actually want to put in a bit of yellow to compensate. Or if you take blue out of your picture, it will become more yellow. So this is the important bit, really. Uh, if you take green out of your picture, it will become more magenta, etc, etc. Right, now just to show you, let's go back to a subtle coloured picture. Now, I want to show you the various tools we have in Photoshop for adjusting the colour. Uh, first of all, let's forget auto colour. <laughs> I don't know what watercolor would do to that. Mm, not a lot, really. Okay. So, right, going back, we've got adjustments. Uh, we've got, first of all, I want to show you variations, which is a huge window, which I can't actually get into uh, your video screen all at once because it's such a big uh, window. But showing you the top here, we've got the possibility of changing the colors. Let's start in the middle, sorry. Right, so that's our current pick. That's our current value. We've got uh, illustrations of what would happen if we put more green in. And we can click on that to make it more green. And if I want to push it back again, I press the more magenta. So you can see the effect that dialing in a bit more color will have. Now, just moving this screen down so you can see the top. Uh, up over here, we've got, uh, we can affect various different parts of the picture or various different parts of the scale, should I say. Uh, the shadows, mid-tones or highlights. Don't know what happens with saturated. Oh, right, okay. Uh, so we'll leave that for a minute. Um, now, down here, more interestingly, we've got a scale which will uh, make our, our corrections or uh, changes fine or coarse. If I push it up to not quite the, the coarsest one, you can now really see the difference. So there's our current picture. Uh, if we put lots of yellow in, we get that. If we put lots of red in, we get that. So it's pretty obvious when you see it like that. Uh, if I now I'm just going up to that same little thing and moving it down the fine end and now we get something which is a bit more interesting uh, where we can really enhance the picture so dialing in a little more yellow will give me that perhaps a little more red just warms up all the colors 
Uh, now I'm not going to save that because I'm going on to the next thing. Anyway, a useful little uh, way of changing your color. If you haven't got a clue what the color cast is, then that's a good place to start, is to open that window and have a look. Now, the more professional way of doing the same thing is to use the color balance uh, thing. Now, here you can see that we've got, we're doing more or less the same thing, but we can do it by numbers. Uh, now, you can see by these sliders what I was saying on the color wheel, that cyan and red are opposites, magenta and green are opposites, yellow and blue are opposite. So you've got the primary colors down here, red, green, blue. You've got the subtractive primaries down here, cyan, magenta and yellow. Moving down the bottom here, we can once again affect the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And interestingly, you can actually do all three. So if I make a correction there, and make a different correction there, and make a different correction on the shadows, it retains all those three. So you're actually altering all three at once. Okay. Um, now I just want to cancel that to get rid of those values, and then open it up again. Right. Uh, now, the other thing to talk about is this uh, Preserve Luminosity, which does exactly what it says it's going to do. If I dial in lots of magenta, uh, the picture will, if I don't have Preserve Luminosity ticked, the picture will start to get very dark and uh, clog up the shadows. Uh, by pressing pre Preserve Luminosity, it... Um, changes the values of the uh, the colors to give us the same kind of contrast that we we started with okay so obviously we don't need any more magenta uh, what we probably could do with with this picture uh, we can subtly change the picture by moving yellow and blue so more cloudy, more sunny. You can't really make a cloudy picture into a sunny picture uh, because the, the shadows are different and everything. So you just can warm up the picture or cool it down depending on your personal taste. Hopefully my personal taste is reflected in the picture that, as it is now. Okay, so that's the kind of the professional tool. If we now look at the same picture in Photoshop Elements, you can see that we've got the same info palette, a bit more useful because it's actually um, right on the picture there. Uh, now the color controls in Photoshop Elements are under the Enhance menu, uh, just color, and we have various tools. This one called Remove Color Cast is eh, okay, it's a bit hit and miss really. Um, so it says here, to, rec to correct color cast, click on a part of the image that should be either grey, white or black. So we get our little picker tool here. And great, we've got some black cows, and black and white cows. So we just click on that and, oh, well, every time I click on something which is supposed to be black, the color changes. If I click on something that's supposed to be white, it's all different because these things are not actually black and white. They do have subtle shades of color in them. As you can see, when I click on this bit, which is almost white here, um, you can see that my cow is actually not black, really. It's uh, all kinds of different colors in there, if you look really closely. So... Picking something which is supposed to be grey can uh, present a few problems. I mean, this wall is supposed to be grey, but I can click on various sections of the wall and get completely different colours every time. So, if you're going to use this tool, I guess you just have to click around until you find a colour you like. But, as you can see, a little bit hit and miss in the literal sense. 
Okay, the other tool that you have, unfortunately you don't have that nice slider tool that I've just been showing you. Uh, we, But we do have the color variations, which comes on a smaller screen that you can actually see this time. And it does exactly the same thing. The fine and coarse thing is now called amount, but it does the same type of thing. We can have completely saturated or we can have very subtle differences. Now what they've done here, moving it back to the middle, uh, we what they've done here, they've avoided using the words magenta, cyan and yellow, and they put increase blue and decrease blue. So decreasing blue will, as I said, add yellow. Uh, but they've, as I say, they've avoided talking about subtractive primaries altogether and just put decrease blue. So quite a useful tool. In fact, it's exactly the same as the one in the full fat Photoshop. But uh, you have to know what you're doing a little bit to use it. But once again, you can just keep popping away until you find the color you like. The thing to take away from this is that colors are not fixed things and you can change the colors to what suits you, what you like. Whichever tool you use, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you're just moving the colors to make something that you prefer and you like. Mm -hmm.